Welcome back to the band guide where we use garage band to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin, and today is another video in the Ultimate Garage Band Beginner's Guide series where we're walking through everything you need to know from the first time you open up Garage Band to you export out your finished mix mastered song. And today we're going through the second step of the mixing process, which is master track processing. This little step can make a big difference in your mix and really jumpstart it and get you moving in the right direction. And it can save you time down the road, which you'll see in just a minute. But before we even get into it, I want to give you something. I put together the ultimate garage band guide. This guide walks through everything, recording, mixing, mastering, has shortcuts, gear recommendations, really everything. And it's completely free from the link in the description below. So be sure to pick it up. But let's go and get into today's video where we're looking at master track processing. So if you've been following along in the last video, we just set up the static mix of our song where we got all of our levels right, our volume and our pan positions, which is crucial. If you haven't already done that, go back and watch that video and apply that to your mix. Now we're working on the master track. And the master track is one place that our entire mix runs through. So by doing two small little things, on the master track, we can make our song sound a little bit cleaner, a little bit more professional, and kind of glue it together so it doesn't sound as much just like a bunch of disjointed tracks. It's going to be subtle stuff, but you'll see that it makes a big impact. So there's two ways to get to your master track. The first is if you're on any track and you hit B to bring up your smart control window, and then you just click... If you're on track here, just make sure you select master. And now you're looking at your master track. And we're going to be putting plugins, aka processing, on this master track to just gently process our entire song. The second way to get there is to scroll down to the bottom of your session, hold command, shift, and M on your keyboard. And that's going to bring up your master track. And now if you hit B, it will automatically be on your master track. You'll see that automatically. This is just a cool little fun feature. You don't need to have that. You can get to it from any one of these tracks as well. So just FYI. Okay, now before we start processing it, there's one more thing that we should do. We should export out our song as is, and you'll see why in upcoming videos, but we need to do it at this stage before we start doing any more processing on the actual song. So first and foremost, go up to your preferences and we need to check something up here. In your preferences under advanced, we need to make sure that export projects at full volume is not selected. This will make sense, but in short, this is just a little bit of a handicap that doesn't actually help you and can kind of hurt you, at least in this stage. So make sure that that is not selected. All right, we're gonna close that out. And now we're gonna go up to share, export song to disc, and here, we're just gonna do an MP3. It doesn't need to be a super high quality file. This is really just to be able to reference back to a static mix at further mix stages to make sure that we're moving it in the right direction, that we like what we've done. Okay, so pay attention to where you're actually saving this and we're just gonna title this static mix. It will export out. And once it's done, we just wanna find it in the finder and we just wanna drag it into our session and line it up with our song so if I solo it now, and I mute it, we hear our song just as it is. Cool, okay. So that gives us just a quick reference back to where we were in the static mix as we start to do actual processing on our song. Okay, now that we've created that track, let's go back and start actually applying this master track processing. So first up, we wanna do EQ. If you don't already have one set up in your master track, you can just go to EQ here and select the channel EQ. Now with this, we really wanna focus on two primary areas, our high frequencies, our bright frequencies, which are gonna be up here, and our low frequencies. So let's just listen to a little bit of this and determine what we need before we actually do anything. Okay, to me, the main two things I'm hearing is I do think we could use a little bit more of that low, low end and just a little bit more crispy brightness up on the top. So let's dial that in while we're listening to the song here. Starting with the low end. Okay. 
Okay, notice how you just feel that kick drum and bass guitar a little bit more. We're not trying to get ourselves all the way there with these moves. We're just trying to dial it in a little bit. Generally speaking, you want to do up to three decibels. If you see down here, we will say gain up to three decibels on each of these moves. Okay, so I feel pretty good about the low end. Let's pay attention to the high end of this mix now. So I'm trying to find how low I can get with this before it starts to get into stuff that I don't necessarily like. When I get down around here, it starts to sound kind of harsh to me. But around here, it still feels pretty good. So you can boost more extreme to hear it, but then once you find where you like it, then scale it back a little bit. Let's go back to this verse here and listen to this one more time. All day long I get what have I done? Cool. Okay. So this is what's called a smiley face curve because it curves up on the sides. And the last thing you need to do with your EQ is just scale back the volume just a little bit to compensate for the fact that you've now added volume with this EQ. So each of these moves is adding a little bit of volume. So we wanna use this output volume here to turn it back down just a little bit so that we're not adding any volume, which will make us think that we like it better. Our ears prefer louder things. So by balancing the output volume, we'll be assessing more accurately what the EQ is actually doing and not just liking it better because it's louder. Okay, so we're turning down just a little bit here, and we just want to make sure it's the same volume with the EQ off and on. So on. I actually think I maybe overdid it just a little bit. Let's try this. What? Okay, notice how much this already opens up the mix. We feel the low end a little bit more. We feel like the cymbals and the vocals just have this space in the upper end. It's almost airy sounding. Check this out. When I turn it off and on, this is off. On. Cool, right? Okay, so the second move that we need to do is setting some compression. Now compression, we're just trying to glue the track together a little bit. And I highly recommend that you get Buster SE by Analog Obsession. This is a free bus compressor that sounds really, really great. I know this looks confusing, but you can literally ignore everything right here and just pay attention to these six knobs over here. That's all you gotta pay attention to. Now with bus compression, you generally speaking want a slow, attack time to maybe like a medium attack time. You wanna be either on 30 or 10 for just about any bus compression. We're gonna start on 30 and we might pull it up to 10 and then a fast release. So either on this first option, the second option here, or occasionally I'll go all the way to auto, but we're gonna start on just this first option, which is the fastest release. So a compressor is going to turn down when the signal gets too loud. So we're gonna set a threshold. When the signal gets too loud, the compressor is gonna turn it down a little bit. It's kind of like an automatic volume fader. And so it can get your tracks moving together in one place. It's a really cool tool. Okay, the last thing we need to do is dial up the ratio a little bit. If you're working on a lighter song, I generally would be doing one and a half to maybe three on the ratio, on a rock song, you can be going up to four is probably about the highest I would go. You could even do still lighter on a rock song as well. This one's a pretty straightforward rock song. I'm gonna start on three to one. That's a pretty good starting point. And then we're just gonna bring the threshold down and listen to the compression as it's engaging, set it a little bit extreme, decide on our attack and our release, and then we'll dial it back up to a more reasonable amount. So let's go. Let's just loop this chorus because you want to be setting it in a louder section of your song. So I think I want uh, a faster attack time because I'm not really getting enough of the drums caught in this compressor, I don't think. Now, 
Now listen, I'm gonna make this really extreme for a second. Listen as I bring the attack time to be really fast, how the drum hits kind of disappear a little bit. Compared to here, right? So that's a good cue. Listen to the drum hits and how this compressor is impacted. I think I like this setting pretty well. Okay, and then as you're setting your threshold and dialing it back up, you wanna look at the meter here and you're just looking for it to be doing up to three or four decibels. You could go a little bit higher than that, but generally up to three or four decibels in this latter section of the song. Okay, now the last thing I did there was I dialed up my makeup gain to make sure that it wasn't losing any volume as the compressor was turning it down. Here, I just ended up with about a decibel and a half, seems to be about the same when this is off and on. There's two bypasses on this plugin, by the way. You can do main over here as a bypass or the blue button up here. Okay, so let's now listen to what our mix sounds like with just these two plugins off and on. Check it out here. Let's start in this verse. Get no work done all day long. I get what have I done? So it's kind of boxy. Drums are a little punchier. What? Crazy, right? Cool. Okay, so that is master track processing just two moves, EQ and compression, and just dialing in those couple of things are really gonna tighten up your mix, give it a little bit of a professional sheen with the EQ, and glue it together with the compression. It's not particularly hard to do, and if you do this at the start of your mixing process, as you get into individual moves, those EQ moves are gonna save you a lot of time because you're not gonna have to do as much EQ on individual tracks. Now I've added a little bit of brightness and low end to my entire mix, I'll do a little bit less of those moves on each individual track right and then similar with compression now that i've compressed the entire signal a little bit i'll do a little bit less compression most likely on some individual tracks okay now, before you go, be sure to grab the Ultimate GarageBand Guide from the link in the description below. It's really gonna help you out. I'd also love to hear from you. Have you been doing master track processing when you're mixing? Do you do it at the start of your mix? I definitely recommend doing it as your second step in your mixing process before you start doing any processing on individual tracks. But let me know, have you been doing it at the start of your mix or have you been doing it later on in the mixing process? Let me know in the comments below. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow where we're starting to put EQ on individual tracks. One thing at a time, I can